Now, as you recall I done a beast mode video a few years ago. I consider that a mistake. Let me guess. Some 16 year old punk sitting watching it thinking, hey, if I buy one of those fragrances, I can be manly too. Ha, <laughs> how cute. Well, I'm going to update that mistake and fix it. This is top 10 beast mode fragrances that you can wear if you have a moustache. <laughs> Because I'm a real man, I don't need a fake stick-on moustache. I actually have one. You probably know to see spots on my face. Oh, don't mean to- These aren't bad. These are signs of a real man. These are the sort of spots that happen when you have a beard. A beard that gets tugged and pulled in your sleep. Especially at me, because I sleep face down, because I'm a man. <sighs> yeah. So, let's get started. A few of you punks probably thought, Hey, I can just buy myself a bottle of quorum and that makes me macho. Bull fucking shit! You need a moustache. But more than that, not all fragrances can be worn with a moustache. Even some macho ones. That's why I've decided to compile this nice list. Plus some honourable mentions to help you guys with a wonderful moustache on your way. And if the ladies don't like it, they can go fuck themselves. They're pretty good at that anyway. That's why we have double-ended dildos and they're always on sale this time of year. Ta-da! Okay, let's get started. So, if you disagree with my list, I don't really give a shit. Feel free to prefer a better list. Also, also be aware that if I don't own a fragrance, I can't include it in a list. So this is the ones that I own that I consider part of this video. So, enough fucking around and let's begin. So, number 10 we have Hugo Boss number 1. Boss number 1 is just outstanding. I've mentioned it before. Someone asked me about the thick, you know, the, the thick atomizer. There's a thinner. This bottle's a few years old and it just smells fantastic. I mean, look at the fucking bottle. Look at the lines on it. It looks so goddamn 80s. I love this stuff. It's got a lovely honey tobacco urinal cake vibe. It's really fucking good. Um, I'm going to explain why. This is number 10. It's got a sort of sweet vibe. It's something I'd expect from an 80s player who's smooth shaven and wears Italian suits. But you're not one of those guys. You wear leather jackets, fucking gold watches, and you smoke Marlboro Reds. Like a man. So that's number 10. Really long lasting. Smells really awesome. Seriously unappreciated gem. Everyone talks about Quorum and Drakkar and Lapidus and Kuros. But this is really damn good. And I will be including it in a future video. That's my number 10. Number 9 is Fahrenheit. Why is that number 9? Why is it not number 1? Shut the fuck up and watch the rest of the video you dick! So this has a lovely petrol vibe but also kind of classy. I imagine a guy in a short leather jacket, really, really short the brand, really expensive, and a Harley Davidson, vintage of course, not the new crappy ones, or a Japanese, you know, um, Kawasaki at the very least. Has a lovely petrol vibe, but sexy, manly, macho. Yeah, you can wear this with a moustache, no fucking issue. It's Dior, stop bitching. Next up, what do we have? Quorum at number three. Quorum is just ball sack poor Rome. I've mentioned it before, as you guys know, I fucking love Quorum. It's cheap, it lasts long, and it smells like Charles Bronson. Damn right. Look at the bottle. Look at the fucking bottle. Look at that shit. Look at the shape of it. This bottle has no intention of modernizing. Look at that font. Look at the typeface on Quorum. Brown and gold and green. This thing is 70s gangster up the ass. I mean, just look at it. Look at the top of the sprayer. It doesn't even give a fuck if it looks good. It's gold. It's fucking gold. It's like it's just saying, fucking try it, bro. And this stuff just... It's just... Bleh! That's the way I can describe this scent is with that noise. That guttural... Bleh. Oh, so manly. That's my number seven. Why'd I say number three? Ten? No, it's like ten, nine. This is number eight. I was getting confused there. I've got so many fragrances on my desk. Now, for the real number seven, Aramis, the original Aramis, not the shitty flankers. This thing is just cowboy cologne. Look at that fucking bottle, it just looks badass as fuck. 
Now, a lot of you are probably arguing, but Animus isn't beast mode. Many of these bottles are a few years old, and yes, some of them may have been watered down in the last year or so. 2015 was a really fucking shitty year for reforms. Most of these bottles are from 2013. Even if I purchased them in 2014, the bottles themselves are normally 2013, 2012, etc. This stuff just smells like fucking Clint Eastwood. Like, you know when the sheriff rides out of town? When you've been robbing the bank with your banditos, trying to be a big man, and the sheriff comes in with his fucking big magnum and tells you to fuck off? Yeah, this is the scent I'll be waving. So you smell the air, if you smell that, you know that shit's gonna hit the fan. Because, some people would say it smells like this. But hey, those people are idiots! 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, we have Amen! Pure leather. Now I know a lot of people will be bitching going, but Amen isn't that manly. Pure leather is pure badass. Pure leather smells like a brand new set of leather boots. It isn't that nice leather when you get an Italian jacket out of fucking Harvard's. Oh no, 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 no. Not that type of leather. The manly leather. The leather that screams, I fucked your wife last night. Ah, smell that. That patchouli. That slight sweetness, but that mm, muscly leather that just punches you in the face and tells you to shut your damn mouth. Ah. Five. This is getting so confusing with so much shit in my desk. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Yeah, we got there. We're sorted. I was getting mixed up. Next, we have Linston de Galen pour Rome. Yes, yeah, you go with bitching at this as well. It's not that manly. It fucking is manly. This stuff smells outstanding. Some people even consider this old man. But yeah, this has a sort of mafia boss thing. It's classy, but that doesn't mean it's a wimp. It's the guy that owns a business, wears a suit, and looks like a presentable businessman with a moustache. He got all that by dealing drugs. He got all of it by being a sly prick. That's what this reminds me of. Yeah. Really, really good. Really dark. Really powerful. Every single one of these bottles that I own perform fucking excellent on me. If you own them, they may have been reformulated. I don't know, but on me, there's only about two here that I can say don't really perform. Next up, what do we have? What is this one? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5... Number four, three, two, one, yeah. This is so fucking confusing, damn it. My moustache is taking my mind away. <laughs> and this is Van, Van Cleef and Arpels Poor Rome. This stuff is outstanding. I used to read this blog called Poor Monsieur. And the guy that wore this, the guy that wrote it was a lawyer. He's actually started writing it again. And the guy that wrote it was a lawyer. And he mentioned in this that he wears this in court when he wants to intimidate. That's the most badass fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. I'm going to give that guy a blowjob, but it's okay because I'm that manly. I'm perfectly secure in my sexuality. So it's a, a blowjob of respect. There's no homo involved. That's the level of manliness that only a moustache can achieve. Plus all these fragrances and more. But anyway, <clears throat> moving on. This has, I mean, this stuff just, it's just tobacco bomb. It's just boom, right in the fucking face. Now that I mentioned this punches you in the face, well, this, this punches you in the face, knees you in the ribs, and kicks you in the balls, then shags your wife while you watch tied to a chair with spikes on the bottom. That's how many fucks this doesn't give. Look at the goddamn bottle. Look at that bottle. Does that bottle look like something you'd wear to the local student bar? No, this bottle's something you'd wear when you're going to fucking perform a hit. Hey, boss, what, do you want me to kill the guy? It's strong. It's manly. It smells like a fucking sweaty ball sack after you've been to the gym, but in a really, really good way that women also find attractive for reasons I can't even fathom, but hey, it gets me laid. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Next up. Number three. You're not going to be surprised to see this. This is Poor Louis by Oscar de la Venta. Yeah, this thing is just so gangster. Now, I don't like one-man show. This has a tiny bit of a one-man show vibe, but unlike one-man show, this actually smells fucking finished. I know you're all going to be bitching. I love one man show. Well, fuck you. I love this. This stuff is just... Mm. It's just so macho. It's insane. It just blows your fucking balls away. It's just uh, really, really powerful. Really strong. Really pungent. Perfect for a goddamn moustache. Next up, we have one which probably will be a bit more surprising. This is Eau Sauvage Parfum by Christian Dior. This deserves a moustache. This thing is so strong. It's so fucking strong, it's unreal. One spray of this. Now, I overspray like a cunt. Okay? I overspray. But let me tell you. I only wear about three or four sprays maximum of this. Ever. And I'm a sort of guy that sprays at least ten sprays of most things. Yeah. That's how strong this motherfucker is. This thing is so goddamn strong, words can't even fathom. Go and get a bottle. 
I'm not even reviewing it. Go and get a fucking bottle right now. Seriously, I've got loads of bottles. I've got so many bottles that are coming out of my ass. Look. Oh, here we go. Look. Oh, bottle of Antaste. Here we go. God. I really should see the doctor about that. <clears throat> but this is a really... The original Eau Sauvage, but it's got a creamy vibe. But it's also still macho and not poofy, wimpy, fucking eyewear, pink Lacoste polo shirts, crap, and skinny jeans because my mother didn't spank me hard enough. Otherwise, I'd be kinky and I'd be into that shit like me with my moustache. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> fuck, um, God, that was priceless. Um, really strong, really macho, excellent. I mean, for performance, this has a, this is quite versatile in the fact that you can wear this to go on a drug deal. But you can also wear it to go to someone's wedding. I mean, how good is that? You can wear it to kill a guy or go to a wedding. So you can wear it to like, like separate the, the soul from the body and also wear it to unite two people in matrimony, you know? I mean, that's just fucking, that's like, that's so deep. That shit is like fucking a poem. Like, that's insane. Now, what is my number one? What do you guys think my number one's going to be? Kuros? <laughs> Lapidus? Oh, come on, be fucking original. No, my number one is something you won't even expect. This is Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather. This is a definition of fucking niche. This fragrance will punch you in the face, grab you by the throat, slam you to the ground and scream, this is niche, motherfucker. This thing is so... Mm. It's just so leathery. So fucking leathery. When I close my eyes and I smell this... Like... Oh, you, you ever watched the movie Westworld? And um, like, you know, by before before Jurassic Park there was Westworld, right? And with Yul Brynner, you know, James Brolin, macho cast, moustaches, oh yeah. Um, well, this was what I think of. When they're running through Westworld and everything's went to shit and the, the town's abandoned and the robots are going ape shit. Spoilers, by the way. Um, the original Westworld, I'd like to add. The 70s one, not the fucking TV show. The original one with Yul Brynner. Don't go giving me that Anthony Hopkins crap. The original one. I'm kidding. The new TV show is also good. But anyway, yeah. That's what I think of. When that park is abandoned and they're riding in the desert shooting each other. This. This is just so macho. It's so strong. It's fucking nuclear. This stuff is outstanding. Tom Ford is expensive. But this. If you go buy one Tom Ford and one Tom Ford only, you buy this shit. This stuff is nuclear and it smells macho as fuck. So we're finished, right? <laughs> Finished? That's cute. We're not even fucking done. Okay? We've got honourable mentions. We're not leaving these guys behind. That's what assholes do. It's like saying in the army. No man left behind. And what are, they, what are they in the army? Macho. And what does the commander have in the army? A moustache. So, in no particular order, Paco Bampo Rome. Now, Paco Bampo Rome reminds me of a barber shop where you would go to get your moustache shaved. So, <laughs> really, I mean, like, when you talk about barber shop sense, there's tons of them. But if you want a pure, raw, 70s barber shop, no fucking bells and whistles, no fancy oud, no fancy other ingredients, you just want basic barber shop, this is the one you go for. Paco Rabanne Pour Rome. This thing is just the, the... When you think of aftershave, you know you always get that smell, that basic aftershave smell. Well, that's this. 90% of the time, that's what you're going to be thinking of. This or Blue Stratos, whatever happens. This stuff is so good. It's so macho. It's so green. Now, it isn't the longest lasting. But who gives a fuck? It smells amazing. Next up, we have Creed's Aventus. Yeah, Aventus is manly enough to roam with a moustache. Let me talk about why that is. Look at the fucking bottle, for first of all. Look at that shit. Look at the guy on the horse. The guy on the horse is clearly going to kill someone and doesn't give a fuck. Then go home and have extreme sex with his wife. Urgh, while she strokes his moustache and thinks he's awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, Aventus has that. Aventus could be a poofy man scent. Could be a wimpy spice boy. I wear skinny jeans and I've got a two inch penis motherfucker scent. But no. Aventus has this lovely smokiness that comes in there. Aventus smells like your dad. And your dad's dad. But still stays relevant because Aventus refuses to be gone. Aventus, Aventus refuses to go away. This fucking thing came out in 2010 and people are still going on about it. Fucking point proven. This thing is almost a dick. It's like, what? Well, 2020, people will still be going on about this. That's a scent that's lasted a decade. That's powerhouse material right there. Do your fucking history. But, um, yeah, really, that smokiness. It could be a total poof scent. I don't mean that. I don't mean, I'm not, again, I don't mean that in an anti-homosexual, you know what I mean? Poof, the sort of little pink and I need to act like fucking idiot scent. Yeah. Poofs can be straight, you know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, this is getting fucking complex, but that lovely smokiness in there, that pineapple, that grilled, it just it just smells like something fucking Pablo Escobar would wear. 
What did Pablo Escobar have again? Oh yeah, a moustache. Next up we have Dracar Noir. I love Dracar Noir and I wasn't going to include it in this list till I smelled it again and realised it's fucking awesome. Dracar has that lovely sporty vibe. But as it dries down, that sporty vibe goes away and it reveals a moustache man's vibe. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger if he didn't shave and went to the gym twice as much. Is that even possible? He went to the gym like all the time. He woke up like middle of the night like, fuck, I should go to the gym. If only I'd done that, I wouldn't have a stomach. Anyway, next to have a scent that no one seems to appreciate. This scent gets so overlooked. I just want to slap people. I just want to grab every reviewer and slap them. This is Chiruti 1881. This is the greatest fucking gem ever. This shit is like, what, 20 quid for 100 mil? It's strong. Look at the bottle. The bottle's goddamn gorgeous. Chiruti is one of the most underrated houses in all of fucking fragrance history. Fact. It's just as good as Prada and all the others. So, smell-wise, this is just... Someone even told me it smells like boot. Stop snorting, okay? It doesn't smell like boot, you fucking idiot. Grow a moustache and come back. But this one has a lovely green, powerful vibe. Really, really powerful, but so goddamn good. Really strong, really powerful, mm, really green. But not, you know, I, I'm a wimp green, as in I'm a farmer who smokes tobacco that I grow in my own place and I have a marijuana field and I deal drugs, so everyone thinks I'm a poor farmer but I'm actually a drug lord. Yeah, that vibe. Next up we have One Man Show Gold Edition, because why the fuck not? Now, I did spray this on, I'm sure. Yeah, I did, I did. This one is just, I mean, it's like um, if you were in Cuba... If you were, no sorry, if you were in Colombia and you were a fucking, a narcos, right? In Colombia, you were a drug dealing motherfucker. This is what you would wear. This is goddamn awesome. It's nuclear strength. It smells fucking awesome. It's macho. It's got a black and gold bottle. There is nothing that this doesn't do right. I don't even wear it that often, but that's because I, I, I savour it, you know? With the whole Bogart reformulation crap going on, I'm not fucking wasting this. Ugh, I love this stuff. Next up, and last, we have Chanel's Antaeus. Now, I wasn't going to include this because it smells too classy to be a macho scent. But, when I wore it again, I realised just how badass this scent really fucking is. Yeah, it's got that. When that dries down, I mean, when Antaeus dries down, it almost has similarities to Aramis. And I thought, oh, shit, I knocked over Quorum. But see how I knocked over Quorum, it landed face down? Not a scratch. That's Even the bottle's macho. Even the bottle doesn't give a fuck. This stuff is just, like I said, the businessman who's a drug dealer and carries a gun everywhere, goes shopping with his wife and has a fucking Mac 10 stuffed down his pants. People are like, wow, that guy's got a big dick. But no one even dares to ask because they know it's probably a gun. But they pretend it's his dick, so he feels impressed because they don't want to fuck with that guy. That's Antaeus. Antaeus is a fucking god. It's named after a god. Or a demigod. I don't fucking know. I don't study history. I'm not an asshole. Anyway, yeah. I mean, even the bottle, like, it looks like a woman's lipstick. Do you know why it looks like a woman's li lipstick? Because it doesn't give a fuck. It's like, yeah, I'm a woman's lipstick. What are you going to do about it, bitch? So, that is my top 10 beast mode scents that you can wear with a moustache. So, let me guess, you've just turned 18. You can buy booze. You can buy cigarettes. Oh, clever boy. You can have sex. Well done. But guess what? Unless you've got a moustache, you ain't gonna get away any of these, motherfucker. I'll be watching if I catch so much as one guy wearing this without a moustache. In case you didn't get that. Okay, well done. Thank you for watching this video, guys. As always, any questions you have on any sent in this video, leave them in the comments before. Send me a personal message. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, keep on smelling fly. I have to reach over to stop the video if you're wondering because I've got so many fragrances in my desk. Come on, give me a break. I got a moustache, bitch.